Um, hello, so today we are going to do this problem, which is part of Lead Code Daily Challenge, maximum running time of N computers. So we have N computers, and we are given the integer N and an array of batteries. Um, and the ith battery basically represents that we can run a computer for that many minutes. Okay, And the goal of this problem is to run all N, N computers simultaneously using these batteries. Okay, So this is important. And the, the way it works is initially you insert at most one battery in each computer and then it runs, uh, the computer runs, and then after that at any moment you can remove a battery from one computer and insert another one um, any number of times, right? So of course as long as the battery still has enough power, still has power, right? Uh, and the battery you insert, it can be either a new one that we haven't utilized it yet, or a one that we just used it for on another computer, but there is still some minutes left, and so we can use it again. And you can assume the adding, removing from one computer and adding it in a computer doesn't take any time, so we don't need to count that. Um, and the batteries, you can't recharge them, so they have an initial capacity, like three here, three minutes, and that's it. Um, and the entire goal of the problem is to find out how many, what's the maximum number of minutes we can run all in computers simultaneously, so all at the same time. So if we we'll take a look here at the uh, first example, we have two computers and we have three batteries with each having three minutes. So what we can do is first we start uh, each computer with one of the batteries, so the two, we still have this one not utilized. And so after two minutes, there will be one left here, one left here, okay? And so we remove, less, for example, we remove this one, right? We keep this one as it is, but we remove this one, and then we put this computer on this one. And so we let it run for one minute. Now, if we run, uh, let it run for one minute, this battery is done, is empty now, right? That's what we have here. And so we switch it over to this one, okay? So, so far we have three minutes. And now we we run this for one minute, this battery gets empty, okay? And now we have, since we utilized one minute from this one, we have only one minute left. And since we have only this, we can no longer do anything because there is not enough for two computers. So we stop and you can see overall we have four, three plus one, okay? So that's what the maximum we can do. So that's the idea here. Now, uh, if you take a look at the length, it's 10 to the power of five. Uh, the number of batteries, and also the number of uh, computers is n uh, 10 to the power of 5. So anything that is like uh, both n by the number of batteries is going to be too expensive. Um, so how can we tackle it? Um, okay, so let's see how we can do this. So uh, the main idea here to think about it is that if we have computers like this, right? Um, so let's say here, and we have some like this, and then we have some batteries, okay? Let's say we have maybe two, uh, three, so these are the batteries, four, six, um, maybe five, and then nine, okay? So you can, if you, if you look at these, right, this battery is not going to be the constraint, right? Because if we are able to get to um, nine, because this is, this is the max, then there would be no problem here because this battery can run this computer for nine minutes. Okay, so the problem is the other ones, how many minutes they can get us to. Okay, so if you take a look here, um, the, the one that limits us, right? So let's say here we have, um, the one that actually limits us is the, the other ones, okay? So how, how, so that's just the first intuition, but how do we sort of make that concrete? Um, so again, the idea is we know this one is not going to be the constraint, right? We can take, because this is the max you can get to, we can just have this with this computer and be done. So how do we, since we, we want to get the max, check the max each time, let's do that. And so let's sort. So th this is already sorted, so we are lucky there, but so what we can do is just once we sort, let's call this B, check if that's bigger than the average, the average of the remaining, okay? 
by remaining I mean the remaining batteries but also the remaining computers because we, 9 will take care of this computer okay and so if we calculate that then first we'd have 9 is bigger than the average of these which is 5 um, 9 plus 9 18 divided by 3 so the average is um, 6 okay so 9 is bigger than 6 so that means this computer can go all the way up to 6 minutes but the question becomes can these okay and so again we repeat so now we have only two computers and we take the max so the max is 4 um, and we check is this bigger than the average what's the average now well the average is 5 plus 4 so 9 divided by the number of the remaining ones which is 2 so that gives you 4 okay so 4 is not bigger than 4 right and so that means we don't we can't we can't we shouldn't remove this 4 here and so what's the the time well the time is going to be um, just the average that we we weren't able to we don't have any extra batteries any extra batteries right? um, okay so let's see how would this distribution work with these computers okay so let's take these three here right first and so just to show you that this four works and so how do we do it well we can get get up to three for all three computers so we get up to three for all three of them so here remaining zero remaining one remaining here once we take uh three is four um no six right yeah six because seven eight nine okay so this level now is three okay so what what happens next well we can definitely do two from this one um and then two from this one right but so we can't do get two simultaneously but we can get one simultaneously taking one from this one one from this one one from this one so we we take one here we take one here we take one here and now we are at four now this one is left is one this one left is zero this one left is five and so now we can't do any more because we only have batteries for two computers so we can't do any more simultaneously so you can see four actually works with this solution and you can see here this six was not never a pro this va this column here was never a problem because it has a bigger value okay so you can see how this solution um we can it can end up working because this nine here took care of this one right we only needed to find a distribution that can uh, realize it for the two remaining ones um, okay, so let's go up this solution. So we said that first we need to sort the batteries, right? So let's sort them up and then we need to get the um, While the last one which is the a bigger one is bigger than the average which is the sum of the batteries, right? Um, divided by n, okay? So that's the average um, Then we want to remove this one battery the biggest one because it's not going to be a problem it's going to take care of th of one of the computers and so we it's going to take care of one of the computers so we subtract that computer and then we want to pop the value because we no longer want to consider it in the average because it's going to take care of this computer and so we pop it off and now we can just return the sum of the batteries divided by n because there is no more extra batteries right so this is, is is going to be the maximum we can do simultaneously because there is no more extra that we can take from one computer and put it in another um, um, okay this is going to be a little bit slower because we calculate the sum each time and so we get time limit exceeded so let's just optimize it a little bit and just have compute the sum here initially okay but each time we subtract we pop get the pop, the value we popped and subtract it just so that we don't have to calculate the sum each time and the result sum is the remaining values and that looks good let's submit and let's see and that gets accepted okay 
Now, in terms of time complexity, we are doing this sort, which is going to be O of n lag n. Um, and then we are doing also um, this pop from a list, so it's O of n. And this can go up also to O of n. So overall, it's O of n squ roughly squared. Um, yeah, pretty much. Um, if we can turn this maybe into a DQ, that would be better. Um, so let's try to turn to a DQ here. So we can just so that popping is um, is O of one, and so we can do that like this. And this just needs to pop from the Q, and then this needs to check the Q. It's still sorted. Uh, this is the same as saying like this, so it doesn't matter really. Um, and so if we run this. It looks good, let's submit. And that passes as well. And this is a better time complexity. Okay. Um, now, one more thing. We can actually solve this also with binary search, um, which is basically with binary search, again, we just need to find a, a valid function f of x where first it's false and then it becomes true, or the reverse first is true and then it becomes false. So, what's what function can we do here? Well, the function sort of is told to us by this. So f of x is going to be just, can we run the computers simultaneously in x minutes, right? Because that's what, sort of what we are looking for. But what, what, what are we looking for? We are looking for the maximum. So we are looking for something where it stays, it first starts true, and then once it becomes false, it stays false. And since we, we will we'll keep increasing the x value, so the number of minutes values, until we find the last one, where where it's it's true because once we get here this means we can't run it simultaneously in this minutes in y minutes okay okay and this would be x and so we would be looking for the last true because that would be the maximum because this is increasing in minutes the the space of x is increasing in minutes okay so that's the idea so um how do we um how do we then with binary search um, this would be, we would just maintain the invariant that low is always, has always f of low true. And then uh, we will maintain for high that, so this is true. And then we'll maintain for high that always f of high is false. Okay, because, um, and then at the end we'll stop when we are, when both are just one apart, so that we can return the low, which is the last true. Okay. Um. So how do we calculate that f of x function here? Well, we can just go through the batteries and see how many total minutes we can get, and um, see if we can uh, if we, if that's smaller, if that's bigger or equal to x, right? Um, yeah, because if it's bigger or equal to x, that means we can run it in x minutes. Okay, so let's actually just run, do that. So our binary search, we need the boundaries, and then we need. Uh, just the template for binary search, we need the difference to be one. Now, what are the bounds here? So it's always better to take some values that are outside of the bounds, so there is no risk if this is like always true or always false, there is no risk of returning a wrong solution. So what would be something outside of the bounds? Well, zero minutes is definitely outside of the bounds because we can't, we can't run them simultaneously in zero minutes. But also the sum of the batteries divided by n plus one is outside of the bounds because we know the maximum minutes is definitely the number of minutes in all of the batteries divided by the number of computers. We can't do more than that because we, we, we won't have any batteries left. Okay, And so if we do plus one, that means it's definitely outside of the bounds. So we take the mid value here, um, which is going to be just um, high, and we do division by two using binary to avoid overflow. And now it's very easy because we just we said low needs to be maintained true. So if f of mid low is, is true, that means we want low to be equal to mid. And since we want to maintain that high is false, we do else. If it's false, that means it's high that it's going to be equal to the middle. Okay, because if mid is somewhere here, it's always better to set it to this value. If it's here, it's always better to set it to this value as well because we want high to finish at the first false. And similarly for, for low, if f of mid is true. 
And then as we said at the end, we will just return low because that's the last true value. The last value, well, this is true, which means it's the maximum number of minutes. Where it's true, which means it's the maximum number of, uh, of minutes where we can run the computer simultaneously. And so now we just need to define f of x. So is it, this basically asks us if we can run all on computers in n minutes. Okay. So let's just do that. So let's see how many minutes we can do. Uh, and we can just go through the batteries and for each battery we want to check we want to just take the min of the power in the battery and x because we, we don't need to run a computer more than x minutes because if we do then we might as well just take the remaining battery and give it to another computer right and so here we just take the total minutes of course this is going to be equal to zero uh, and we add how many we can get for a computer uh, how many minutes we can get out of this one um, and then at the end, we just take the total minutes divided by n to get... So this is the total minute across all computers. So if we divide by n, we get how many we can, uh, how many minutes we can do simultaneously, right? And so if we do that, we want to make sure that this is at least x, right? Because, because here we are interested only if we can... If we can run it in three minutes, okay? If we can run it in 4 minutes and x is equal to 3, then that means, and we can run it in 4 minutes simultaneously, that means we can definitely run it in 3 minutes simultaneously because um, there's enough batteries for 4, that means there is enough for 3, okay? And so that's pretty much it for binary search function. Um, so if I run it, and we submit. And looks like it accepted. Okay. Now, in terms of time complexity, this is the binary search itself is of the search space, and this search space here it goes from zero to the sum of batteries divided by n, so even up to the sum of batteries. So let's call that k. Um, and now this here goes through just the batteries. So let's call that O of b. Um, so it's log k. Okay. And then this is going to be B. Because we do it, we calculate F each binary search run. Okay. Uh, with K here, the sum, and B being the um, number of batteries. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it for this problem. It's pretty good application of binary search as well, like yesterday's problem. Um, yeah, please like and subscribe, and see you in the next one. Bye.